what's going on guys this is grim watch with a video and as you can see by the title you know what we're about to talk about <laughs> first things first i want to always start my platform off with this no matter your sex gender age race or sexual orientation we always respect it here on this platform no matter what i make sure that there's always respect here now at the end of the day when it comes to a lot of this cancel culture uh, it's really a lot of white supremacy <laughs> that be going on that's really making these complaints because you don't see people of color making these complaints, especially not no Aretha Franklin song. So, I mean, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it is blowing me like <laughs> the legend, <laughs> the queen. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> anyway, let's keep reaping. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. In today's day and age, it seems as though more groups are attempting to remove art that they deem offensive and potentially damaging to society. And then, like, first off, my issue with this is the song Natural Woman is like how she feels. She's not saying all women this, women are that, blah, blah, blah. She's not making any, she's not even generalizing any kind of like, like, <laughs> statement. Like, a person made her feel a way, and she made a song about her feeling that way. So how could you dare say it's harmful or damaging to other people? And then on top of that, natural woman that's not even a shade or a target like at the end natural means natural non-manufactured biologically when we're talking about natural woman biologically natural you were born bred this way there is nothing in you that is not from birth like that is a natural woman you know what i'm saying so if the shoe don't fit you on this topic of this song, go find another song. Just like if the shoe don't fit, go find another pair of shoes. You don't go to a shoe tailor and, and get mad at him. I mean, not a shoe tailor. You don't go to a shoe store and get mad at them because you got the wrong size. It don't fit you. The shoes don't fit. Why get a size 10 if you wear a 7? Why get a seven if you wear a size 10? Why get mad at the people that created the shoes if they also come in your size? Meaning there's other music that's, that's geared towards your kind of audience. I don't know, I just think it's petty. Like, it's really petty. I don't think it's coming from, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that part, you know, I just, I just had to make like, it's, it's not coming from that. That's all I'm saying. You know? I'm like, I'm just so. This song is old. Like, this is a love song. Okay, I didn't. Let's let's get into this video, I guess. Like, cause I'm getting upset just thinking about like the the thought of banning these songs, but. You know, I don't want to speak too free too soon, and I haven't watched the entire. Last world. week, the so Transcultural Mindfulness that's Alliance right. took to Twitter to call for Aretha Franklin's 1968 hit "You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman" to be removed from both Spotify and Apple Music after considering the lyrics to be offensive. The group would tweet. Aretha Franklin's 1968 song, Natural Woman, perpetuates multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. There is no such thing as a natural woman. The song has helped inspire acts of harm against transgender women. Come on, that is a stretch. Like, honestly, let, let's break this down. Okay, Aretha Franklin's 1968. First off, you know how much things... In 1968, that is worth banning? <laughs> Come on. Like, it was the 60s. There was a lot of things y'all y'all should go back and try to ban. And Natural Woman's song is not one of them. Second line, Natural Woman perpetuates. Natural Woman perpetuates. So perpetuate is basically meaning gives a, a certain perspective. 
Okay, natural. Let's break that word down. That word, the definition, I don't know the exact definition, but meaning non-manufactured or, you know, whatever. A natural woman, so a biological woman. All right. I don't know how a woman, a biological woman saying, you make me feel like a biological woman perpetuates multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. Come on. That is a... And then, okay, when they make claims like this, they can never explain multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. How, in, in any way, how does this specific song perpetuate multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes? Listen to these, list these anti-trans stereotypes for us so we can identify where the problem lies so maybe we can uh, we can really reanalyze it but they make generalized statements and i'm saying they as in the lgbt community the people that target unnecessary <laughs> unnecessary things like this is this is one of them okay next line there is no such thing as a natural woman how sway how come on now like there's no such thing as a natural woman so you're basically saying there's no such thing as the word natural at this point you're going to make the word natural seem equivalent to back when the word gay or queer was offensive to the LGBT community. But natural is a generalized term, a, even a uh, scientific term, it's a medical term, it's a um, authentic term, it's a, it's a, it's a synonym <laughs> for authenticity. <laughs> so, and, and, and next, they're gonna they're gonna get up, upset with words that got authentic in it. Like, okay, this song helps inspire acts of. This song definitely helps inspire acts of love. You know, X. I'm gonna say eggs for S E X. Okay, so yeah, it inspires those kind of acts. Maybe you know. I'm pretty sure somebody' parents was conceived to this song. Okay, whatever. Um, this song has helped inspire the acts of harm against transgender women. How sway? What statistics or any cases where this song being played or has any kind of perception that could be misconstrued as I'm going to harm someone who is trans? Okay, and TCMA is requesting it to be removed from Spotify and Apple Music. Out of all the things <laughs> that's worth banning, you want to go after the queen, the legend. Fuck you mean, okay? Like, I had to say that. Sorry for dropping the F-bomb, but come on, come on, come on, come on. This is... This is ridiculous. Let me finish watching this video. Only TCMA in. is requesting that it is removed from Sp only 40 seconds in. I didn't ran my mouth this long. Spotify and Apple Music. Shortly after the tweet went out, many didn't have Look at her. She ain't gonna harm a fly. If anything, she might hit you with an apple pie. I ain't even mean to make that rhyme, but you know what I'm saying. Hesitate to offer their own commentary on the headline. Dio Hughley would take to Instagram and caption, that song was written in 19 MF 68, stop. Freedom to identify or classify or assign whatever you feel like is your right, cool. Mm -hmm. But no said. one's right should infringe on anyone else's, what I especially just how they feel, like the song said. Even DL Hughley agree with me on that one. Yes. Contrary to what I guess is unpopular opinion, there is such a thing as a natural woman. Nothing about this song written over a half a century ago has anything to do with hate or harm to anyone. And this is why the LGBT get backlash because I don't think these, these tear downs and removals and bans has anything to do with the LGBT group necessarily. I just think it's a bunch of 
non-color, you know, people or non-people of color making these outrageous because of the privilege that they have, you know. So the entitlement is there heavily in these accusations. And because of these appalling accusations from people of the LGBT community that's in a, such a high, high level, the rest of the LGBT community, the majority of them, is getting a backlash and people are assuming that every LGBT person is like this all because some white supremacist person got their panties in a bunch. For what? They ain't getting up. I don't know. Let me let me <laughs> let me keep it pushing. Let's keep reading. This was a song about <laughs> love and affection. Is nothing sacred anymore? Y'all might as well pack R and B up. Ari Spears was another comedian who chimed in to agree with Hughley. Film director Malcolm D. Lee would also comment on Hughley's post saying, There has to be much more nuance in this situation. It's one of the greatest love songs ever written, period. Please leave Carl King and Aretha Franklin alone. As that part, I ain't mean it. The tweet gained more traction. It, like it was that. later revealed that the original account is for parody. According to New York Post, a representative from the Transcultural Mindfulness Alliance stated, this is satirical. The Post would also note that the account changed his bio information sometime Monday afternoon to- What? I am stunned that not a single media outlet has reported on Aretha Franklin's tweet even attempted to contact this account for comments. Based on the sheer ridiculousness of the content on this page, how could journalists not comprehend that this is parody satire? Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous, y'all. And like, okay. Okay, and I'm sorry this might be a long video. I am pro-cancel culture. And, and <laughs> this sounds crazy. I feel as though it can go two ways. And I'm just waiting to see because I'm on the fence watching, you know, and I'm here supervising to see who's right and who's wrong, you know. And there's some things that we just need to come to the middle ground for. And I like to stand in the middle ground. So when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to things like this, it is I just Look, let's just keep let's just keep reaping, man. Let's just keep reaping. <laughs> to read parody slash satire, founded January 2023, exclusively by trans individuals, promoting cultural change to ensure the inclusivity of trans individuals. But it's like you complaining, but you're not saying exactly what it is. And I'm not saying like I'm not saying that we need you to go into exactly how this made you feel no i'm saying give us a a outline of exact okay you know how your, t your math teacher asks you um <laughs> what's one plus one show your work and the answer okay cool cancel culture is with it one plus one equal two but the problem with cancel culture and especially when it becomes these ridiculous bands, they don't know how to show their work. You know what I'm saying? And then when they don't know how to show their work, sometimes you're looking for a problem that's not there. And sometimes the answer is right. Like a lot of the stuff that they, they're trying to cancel, they're just trying to change the outlook. But let me go back to what I was saying. There, it can go two ways. The, the one way is it can be to the point where there is no negative content on a mainstream platform, which I actually look forward to because I'm a very positive person and I don't like to see harm comes to others. I just want everyone to be successful, you know, and like roasting is cool, you know, but at the same time, there's a level to, uh, of harm that you can place on someone that you may not know. So with that being said, the other way it can go is it can be so outrageously free because the extremity of cancel culture that our liberties become so over contained where there's like an expansion or an explosion of, you know, the bad kind of backlash and content that, that will come with cancel culture. So that is that those are the two ways that I can see 
uh, how cancer culture would go. So I'm I'm kind of pro it because they're they're trying to um, stop a lot of trauma and things that we are uh, desensitized to um, to create a new healing um, future as a whole in society. And a lot of people don't like change, so they find it harder. And I think with that change, it does come with a certain comprehension and understanding that a lot of people don't want to face. And a lot of people don't want to to face something that they grew up believing. So there's a quote that says, "Is the easiest thing to do is fool the fool rather than to convince the fool that they've been fooled. I love that quote. I followed that quote for years, you know, because there's so many of us that that don't know the truth or don't want to know the truth or can't comprehend the truth because we're too afraid to let go of what we feel is our well-being. But anyways, let's get back to the video. Individuals. Let's keep the post going. also state that the new bio is a direct contradiction to a tweet that claimed that it was not a parody account, but instead trying to make culture more fair for transgender individuals. Of course, that tweet has since been deleted. Hughley and Spears weren't the only ones upset over the news. Online, a Twitter user questioned the validity of the- I'm so happy to find out it's a fake account. Because that's ridiculous. Whoever made the fake account, <laughs> they needs to be banned off social media. Because you just you just created an uproar for no reason, and then you probably just somehow damaged or hindered this woman's career. Aretha Franklin is like it's like okay. First off, let me make sure she's still alive. Let me pause. All right, am I back recording? Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to look her up. You would think that I would know if Aretha Flanker had died or not, but I did not know she died. Yikes. Yikes. I might get canceled for this. <laughs> Everybody gonna be in the comments like, you idiot. How are you gonna talk about someone you don't even know if they're alive or not? Okay, well, first off, she died in 2018. You know what I was doing in 2018 to 20 now? Like, <laughs> been going through a lot. I, like, during 2018, I had... I think it was seven or nine people die, and Aretha Franklin was not one of them. So, you know, I was going through a lot. So her death right over my head, um, you know, and I respect and love her. Like I said, she's a legend. She's a queen, you know, and she deserves all her roses, period. But what's, what's crazy is you also wait to the woman is gone in 2018 to get a song banned, <laughs> From 1968, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's still ridiculous. I think that's worse than me forgetting she passed. So, I mean, that's let's just let's just keep reaping. The tweet. So, I kind of feel bad saying that. <laughs> oh God, oh God, this is so dark. I guess I'm grim for a reason, yo. I ain't even go. I didn't even realize it's about to get that dark. God, I'm over here talking about some reaping, and we're talking about death. Oh man. Long live the queen, though, honestly. Um, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, you know that queen. I'm talking about Queen Aretha Franklin. So, yeah, let's keep reaping, baby. Someone heard the song and attacked trans people? What are things that never happened for 400? <laughs> oh, and Queen Aretha Franklin alone. Didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that? I just tweet. said that. So <laughs> I just said that, yo. <laughs> Like <laughs> fears weren't the only ones who killing who, who killing trans women or harming trans women over this song. Like this is ridiculous. Sent over the news online, a Twitter user questioned the validity of the tweet. So someone heard the song and attacked trans people. <laughs> what are things that never happened for four hundred? Right. Omg, get a life and stop trying to cancel everything. How sad and pathetic one's life must be if this is a priority to you. This is a great song. You yeah, go, girl. Right. Yep. Hughley would follow up by reposting screenshots from Baller Alert's Instagram account. The Transcultural Mindfulness Alliance would respond to their own Aretha Franklin tweet. I am stunned that not a single media outlet who reported on the Aretha Franklin tweet even attempted to contact this account for consciousness of the content on this page. How could journalists not comprehend that this is parody involving their community? Sorry, 
Baller Alert would also notice that the Twitter account had joined in 2009, but the bio says the group was founded in January of 2023. But what do you guys think about the controversy surrounding Aretha Franklin's 1968 song? Let us know in the comments below. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. <laughs>